It's the grandson of Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light. I am full of good things from above. And I am using these good things wisely. Why do you think people don't tell the truth? Think about your own life and think about when you were young. What kept you from telling the truth? After you've done all your searching, you'll come to the conclusion that ultimately it's fear. Fear is what keeps you from telling the truth, one fear or another. Whether it be being exposed, whether it be some type of embarrassment, whatever the reason is, it comes down to fear. So then my question is, when you see a person telling the truth, does that mean that they're fearful? <laughs> well, obviously not. So then if the only reason you lie is because of fear, then what causes you to tell the truth? The opposite of fear is love. The opposite of lies is truth. There's only two paths. So that means when a person lies, they're choosing fear. When a person tells the truth, they're choosing love. So now when someone tells you the truth today, are they telling you the truth because of fear or are they telling you the truth because of love? Which one is it? Now think about who has lied to you in your life. Think about who has lied to you. Then that could only mean that they don't love you. Isn't that true? Whether that's your parents, whether that's your coworkers, whether it's your government, whether it's your society, whether it's your school, whether it's your pastor, it doesn't matter. If they are indeed lying to you, then they are fearful and they hate you. They don't actually love you. See, because with truth comes love. You see? When you, when you are in a relationship with someone, you don't want them lying to you. You want them to tell you the truth because that proves that they love you. If they lie to you, then you don't feel as though you're loved. <laughs> it's very simple. So then when it comes down to this word of God, if the person telling you the word of God is not telling you the truth, then are they loving you and do they love you? No, they don't. So if they are telling you the truth, then that could only mean what? That they are indeed loving you. Now you weren't taught that in this world. Remember, in this world they make lies their refuge. Do you know what a refuge is? It's a place of safety. So I was telling you that they have made lies their place of safety in this world. They feel safe in lies. But we know eventually those lies are all going to come crumbling down. And so that's why it's showing that I don't love you when I tell you lies. I'm telling you something temporary that's going to crumble down eventually. Why would I do that to you if I indeed love you? Now the things that Abba gave us, are they temporary or are they everlasting? I give them everlasting life. So he's giving us something everlasting. So then he's proving to us that he loves us. <laughs> Like I said, when it comes to this word of God, look at what it says about them, about the people. They say prophesy, prophesy, prophesy lies unto us, deceits. Tell us smooth things. So the people prefer to be hated. I mean, isn't that what that means? If they're telling you to tell them a truth, I mean, tell, to tell them a lie, then doesn't that mean that they are telling you to hate them? 
prophesy unto us smooth things, then you're telling me to hate you. You're telling me not to tell you the truth. That means you don't love yourself. See why you don't receive it as love when I'm telling you the truth? That's why he told us all to marvel not if the world hate you. It's going to be confusing and that's why he told you not to marvel. If there wasn't a strong possibility that you would marvel, then he wouldn't have told you not to marvel. <laughs> but because he loves you, he told you ahead of time, marvel not if they hate you. Because they don't know good. They receive the good as evil and they receive the evil as good. That's what the scripture says. They put good for evil and evil for good. So that's why you're going to have a paradigm shifting experience when you give all this love to a person and they don't receive it as love. They're going to say that you hate them or you're being mean to them. And you're like, wait a minute. No, me hating you and being mean to you is lying. But you don't know that that's what it is. Wow. Wow. Y'all see that? Because that's actually what's happening. Didn't they uh, crucify Yahusha? <laughs> now, what was he giving them? Love or hate? What was he giving them? He was giving them love and look what they gave him in return. And that's why he told us not to marvel when they seek to tear us apart for telling them the truth. Did y'all not read about Stephen, the martyr, who gave his life for the truth? And they stoned him and it says they listened to him all the way up to the point where he told them that they had crucified Christ. And then they didn't want to hear any more of that. And they killed him. But he told them the truth. And it said his face was as the face of an angel. <laughs> and yet they still stoned him to death, guys. Do you hear that? Because he told them the truth. Why did John the Baptist's head end up on that platter? Because he told Herod the truth. That's why. Why did they crucify Yahusha? Because he told them the truth. Did you not read in the scripture where it says, Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Why is that in there, guys, if it's not reality? That there is a very high chance that you will become the enemies to the ones around you when you tell them the truth. People are terrified of the truth when it's the truth that sets you free. Now, how silly is it to be scared of the key when you're sitting there bound down with chains? The key is coming to unlock you and you're terrified of the key. How does that make any sense? But that's the case in this world. All day long, I extend my hands like a hen does to her chicks with her wings to cover them. And you would not allow me to. So that means I'm trying to give love to you and you won't let me give it to you. <laughs> so do you all understand this message today? The world will not compute what you're giving as love. They will say you have a demon. They will say you're evil because they call good things evil. They call, they, they put sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. So when you're hearing sweet words, you're actually getting poisoned. But when you're hearing bitter words, you're actually getting healed. Just like when you take the bitter herb and you eat that and you get healed. But you take the sweet, rich food and you're actually getting sicker as you eat it. It's everywhere around you. This truth. It's whether you accept it or not. Whether you are grown enough as a grown man or woman to stand up and say, Hey, look here. I can't just eat cake and fucking ice cream all the time. I can't. I have to understand that in order to live, I have to eat the healthy things as well, even though that's not what I want. But see, Bebe's kids never learned that. They never learned moderation. They never learned self-control. You see? But to us it is given to know the mysteries, he said, for he has hidden them from the wise and the prudent and has shown it unto the babes. The ones that are going to Abba just saying, Abba, why? And they accept his answer when he gives it. 
Everybody just wants to be told the good things about themselves and not the bad. As if they don't have both. As if they don't. It's like being an Israelite. Do you know that as an Israelite, I know from personal experience, when you wake up into this knowledge of who you truly are, that you're the people of the book, you're going to hear wonderful, magical, beautiful things about yourself out of that book about Israel. And you're also going to hear about your shortcomings as well. Abba's not going to lie to you. He tells you that you're stiff-necked. Listen to me. God says this of his own people. Now, he says you're stiff-necked. You're rebellious. You're hard at hearing. You're hard-hearted. And you're hard-headed. You're sottish. This is Abba's words to describe you. The most rebellious family, Abba calls Israel that don't know how to listen and hearken hard-headed ass little niggas see I just keep it real with y'all when I talk if you can't accept the truth then I'm sorry for your ass you can't accept Christ if you can't accept the truth for all of y'all who are running from the truth then you're running from Christ today why you saying you're holding on to him <laughs> yeah right holding on to vanity and lies today and you know you are you know it You see, you're so scared of the hearing the truth. And then why did Abba say you? I told you about Israel. They had to hear the good and the bad. It's also written there that Israel is a special people above all people upon the face of this earth. The Most High did not choose you because you were more in number than any other people, but because Abba Yah loved you and would keep the promise that he swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, then. So you hear that, you feel good, but then you also hear... I'm rebellious. I'm rebellious. I'm hard headed. I don't like to listen. So let me fix that then. Since I was telling me that's in my nature, let me fix it. But if you deny hearing that, oh, no, 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 no. I'm just a special people above all people and I'm only good. And that's all I've ever said that I was. You're a liar. That's not all he said you were. You're a double sided, just like everybody that comes into this world of duality, nigga. You can't escape that shit. Everybody come in here dual. Everybody is. So to act like you not is just a lie. And it don't profit you to live in lies. But what does it say about the people of the world? They will say we have an inherited lies in things there is no profit. What did I tell you? So that means the ones around you that claim to have loved you, whether it was your mom, your dad, your parents, your mentors, or whoever it is that said they loved you, if they lied to you, which is what the Bible says a lot of you are going to say in the end, if they lied to you, then they don't love you. You see that? But to people that have been hearing lies, and see, lies are smooth things and easy to be received, which is what they were asking the prophets of God to give them. Smooth things and easy to be received. No. No. If you're wrong, you need to be told your ass is wrong. And see, in the times that we're living in right now, because Israel coming out of their slavery, out of their punishment, and coming into their mercy and into their rest, well, that means that there's another person that's going to be punished. If one person, if, if a nation went up as Israel went down, then as Israel goes up, that nation must come down. And who is that nation? Esau. So if we don't, as people of the Most High Yah, tell the world that Esau, who Esau is, what Esau's crimes are, and why he's going to be destroyed off the earth, then we have not done our job and we're just telling you smooth things. But we know that the people that have been running this world are Edomites for the last 400 years. So of course it's going to be strange for you to hear, wait a minute, are you kidding me? These people are actually sinful? These people are actually wicked? These people are actually sinister? These people actually worship the beast? These people are murderers? These people are slavers? These people are just, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. But see, when you're told, if you're an Edomite and you're told that today, then you won't like me and you'll hate me and you'll want to kill me. It's just the way it is. So then do I become afraid to tell you 
Look back to the beginning of this message. Do I become afraid and say, well, if I say that kind of stuff, then they may want to kill me. Since they're such a violent people, they may want to kill me. Oh, well, hell, I have given up my life willingly. No man take it from me. I give it up. Uh, did you hear that? For the truth I do. So I'm going to tell you the truth. And if you try to take my life for me telling you the truth, then I'll just take my life back again. See, they don't like being told things like that because they don't have faith and don't believe what I'm saying is true. Oh, well, it don't change it from being true. Why are you so mad if what I'm saying ain't true? That's what y'all need to tell people when they get all defensive about what you're saying. Say, why the hell are you so mad if what I'm saying isn't even true? Like a nigga talking about me. If what you're saying about me ain't true, why the hell would I be mad at you about saying it? It's not true. I have had many smear campaigns. Many slanders, many false witness, bear false witness against me, many of these things behind my back. And I've had it cost me uh, livelihood and money and friends and all kinds of things, false accusations against me. But do that mean I got to get mad and, and, and bitch and moan and cry about it and defend myself to this person, try to get them to not believe that about me? Who cares whether they believe that about me or not? And that's when you know you're ready to tell the truth is when you can say, who cares whether they hate me or not? I got to say it because the only reason you're not saying it is so that you don't be hated. Tell me I'm wrong. But you can't tell me I'm wrong. So then you just got to accept the truth. It may piss you off to hear it, but it don't mean it ain't true. And somebody got to tell it to you. Well, only the loving one is going to tell it to you. You just didn't know that's the way it worked. Why would a father who loves his son, loves his son, chasten him often but a man who does not love his son treats his son like a bastard can you help me understand that see y'all don't understand truth and love a man that loves his son will chasten him often often and when you see that, you won't perceive that as love from that father. You will say, this father's being hard on that son. This father's being too mean. This father's not being merciful enough. This father's this. This father's that. Well, the Bible says, in he whom his father delighteth, he chastens him often. <laughs> if he delights in him, he will do it. But if you don't get chastened, then you are indeed a bastard and not a son. So if you're scared of chastening, can you be Abba's son? Nope. You can't. If you're scared of correction, you cannot be. And most people are scared of correction. So you see why they didn't enter or not in? It's going to be like this for every nation on the earth that tells their people the truth of what they've done. Look, if you're an Israelite, a so-called Negro on the earth, when you tell your people the reason for their downfall, the majority of them will not believe you. See how this works? When you tell them the reason why they suffer, the reason why they're broke, the reason why they don't have any land, the reason why they don't know who they are, the reason why they don't have any anything is because they don't keep their God's commands to love God and to love their neighbor as their self. They will not love each other right. And so therefore they suffer at the hands of others. And when they you tell that's the truth. But when you tell them that most of them don't receive that they want to blame somebody else. No, it's not because of me. I didn't do anything. It's because of them. That's what every other nation is doing. So when an Edomite gets up and he speaks to his Edomite brothers and sisters and he says, this is what we have done wrong. We have come against God and God's people and sought to destroy them off of the earth. That is what you've been doing, brothers and sisters. They are not going to want to hear one of their brothers and sisters say that. So if their brother and sister does say that, then what does that mean? That they love God and they love their neighbor as themselves. They love Jacob just like they would love their own Edomite brother. That's what it means. And so since they see Jacob suffering, they go to their brother and say, stop doing that to Jacob. But what will his people do to him? The same thing. Ah, we don't want to hear that crap. Get out of here. We haven't done anything. That was Four, 400 years ago, we weren't even around then. You're going to do the same thing to him that the prophet, what does it say? A prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown, his own nation, own kin. See? So if you're an Edomite that speaks truth, you will get more love from Israelites than you will from Edomites. If you're an Israelite that speaks truth, you will get more love from Edomites than you will from your own people. That is scriptural. He came unto his own and his own knew him not. He said, I have not found faith like this. 
in all Israel. And he was talking to a Gentile when he said that. And then he also said a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. He could not do any mighty works there because they didn't believe on him. So everything that I'm telling you is true. Doesn't matter where you're from. If you tell your people about what they've done wrong, they will hate you for it. It's sad to see. And it's rather pathetic if you ask me. Person that can't be told when they're wrong, even though they know what they did was wrong. I can understand if you're ignorant of your wrongdoing, but if you know what you did was wrong and somebody tells you what you did was wrong, then admit it to them today instead of, no, it was because of this. It's always a reason y'all niggas got. Y'all didn't read Genesis? I only did that because this. Eve. I only did that because that. Adam. I only did that because this. That's what they said. They blamed and blamed. It didn't stop no punishment from coming on them, so it ain't gonna stop no punishment from coming on you. Just because you deny it and run from it when somebody opens their mouth and tells it to you doesn't it's gonna stop nothing, man. So like I said, man, y'all must know that today, that it takes love to be told the truth. It takes hate to lie. If I hated you, would I tell you the truth or would I lie to you? No, if I loved you, would I tell you the truth or would I lie to you? Now, am I telling you the truth today? So then what does that mean? See how the math equation works? See how it works? It works the same way with my wife. If I tell my wife I love her and yet I lie to her, then I don't love her. So I might as well stop lying. Isn't that obvious? But if I tell my wife the truth, even if it's hard to tell her the truth, I do. Then do that mean I love her? Okay then. Now my children, if I lie to my children, does that mean I love them? But if I tell my children the truth, does that mean I love them? So this is continuously working this way with everything in life, but yet y'all don't want to humble down and just accept this that way with God's truth. That if somebody's speaking God's words to you and you can verify it with the Bible and it is indeed true, then that's proving that they're doing it out of love. Or else, why else would they do it? If somebody knows you're ignorant and they want to have power over you, won't they seek to keep you ignorant? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But why in the hell would somebody who has been given great power seek to share it with you if they hate you or if they're afraid of you? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. You all see how simple this is to understand today? So like I said, y'all can weed through all of this nonsense by coming down to these two simple things. Have they told me the truth or lied to me? Now, based on that answer, tells me whether they love me or not. And it's that simple. Now, if they lie and I catch them in a lie and I say, man, you lied to me. And they say, you know what? Yep, I did. They confess their faults and ask for forgiveness. Then I am quick and ready to forgive. And that's how you got to be. So that when we slip up, our father will forgive us just as quickly. You see? But when those who just seek to just backbite and hate, Abba Yah knows what to do with those. So you don't worry about them. You just keep speaking truth to power and sending love vibrations out in this world. Y'all hear me today, little flock. So that's all for now. Silawam Israelah.